Going into the final round of the US Championship 2015, Hikaru Nakamura was leading, but only half point clear of Ray Robson in second place. Well, it's clear that Robson had to go for a win against Gureyev. But what should Nakamura do? Should he play solidly, maybe you know, keep a draw in hand, or should he go all out for a win? Let's take a look. He's playing Alexander Onishuk, who has a reputation of, of being quite a solid player. Now, if Nakamura played bishop b5 and a Spanish, he would probably have to face the dreaded solid, super solid Berlin. Instead, Nakamura played a scotch, or is it a scotch? Let's have a look. He didn't recapture here. Instead, he played bishop c4. So, possibly a gambit continuation. This is a very old opening system. A 19th century system, really. Now, if bishop c5, then c3 is possible. That's a that's a plausible line. But instead, Onishuk played knight f6. A very uh, good move, attacking the e-pawn, which has to advance if white wants anything. d5, the best counter, so that if pawn takes knight, then pawn takes bishop. And, well, that's absolutely fine for black. So, bishop b5. This is well-known position and the knight comes to e4 a beautiful post for the knight knight takes d4 so white gets material back and of course you can see that that knight is attacking the knight on c6 and there's a pin there so what's happening well black could play bishop d7 here in fact onishuk played that against nakamura in a game they played in 2007 so why didn't he play bishop d7 here probably I'm sure Nakamura would be ready with some kind of improvement. I, I should say in that previous encounter, Onishuk actually won the game, but fearful of an improvement. Instead, Onishuk played bishop c5 after about a minute's thought. Now, why can't white take on c6? Well, you can, but it's inadvisable. Because then bishop takes f2 check. And let's say king f1... We're following a game between Pinedo and Anderson. That's Adolf Anderson, and this game was played in Amsterdam 1861. This really is an ancient variation. In this position, you can see that black threatens a deadly check on a6, and this is known to be very good for black. So instead of taking on c6, Nakamura just shored up that diagonal just keeping everything protected with that bishop on e3. Best move, and again, well-known position. Onishuk doesn't bother protecting that knight on c6. Instead, he's just giving up a pawn. First, Nakamura exchanges on c5, but then takes on c6. So, Onishuk gives up a pawn, but what does he have for it? Well, there's very often a kind of balance in the opening. If you if you win a pawn, usually you lose time. And you can see that's what happened to white in this case. Nakamura hasn't castled. He's yet to develop his knight on b1. You know, that means you know these rooks are, are, are only later going to come into the game. Whereas Onishuk has already castled. His rook is on a semi-open file. Knight in a nice position. Um, these pieces ready to spring into the game. So this is definitely decent comp compensation for black. If white plays a move like b3 to try and hang on to everything, well you can see that now black's pieces are coming out quickly, there are threats here, this is very pleasant for black. So Nakamura, after I should say 18 minutes thought, castle kingside, I'm surprised he spent so long actually. Um, I'm sure he would have checked this line at home. Anyway, rook takes b2. And now here, this move, bishop takes d5, has been played before, but it's clear that black has very nice activity in this position. Um, that bishop comes out, threatening the rook. Black's pieces are active, white isn't developed. Definitely worth a pawn. Nakamura, after... Six minutes thought, played queen takes d5, and apparently this is a new move in the position. Onishuk exchanged and recaptured his pawn. 
So material is level and black still has decent activity here, but as I mentioned, there's a balance. Having taken this pawn, suddenly that gives white a little bit more time to bring some pieces out. So the knight comes into the game, perhaps not the best square, but still gaining a bit of time against the rook, which continues to an active square hitting the pawn. But now Nakamura is completing his development. Rook comes to a lovely file here, hitting the knight, hitting the pawn. And now Onishuk played actively with knight d3. Could drop the knight back. Um, I guess white would get rid of that active rook. I mean, this is a very solid way for black to play, followed by bringing the king into the middle. Um, should be okay for black, but maybe a little better for white. Instead, Onishuk played knight d3, which I think is a very tempting move, just to stay as active as possible. This is, this is the modern way to play chess. You don't mind giving up a pawn. You keep active pieces. And he followed up with this idea, bishop e6. So this is clever. Given up a pawn, but he's hoping that after this exchange, then he'll have great pressure on the pawn on f2 and pressure on this on white's second rank, actually. This is potentially a very powerful piece on e2. So very dynamic way of playing for Monishuk. This is good. But Nakamura was having none of it. He dropped the bishop back to b3. a5 from Onishuk and rook a7 continuing to chase that pawn. Onishuk exchanged and now he took back that pawn on e5 with the rook, which first glance looks very sound. It also protects the a pawn, but maybe he should have just kept his rook active on the second rank and maybe just play g6. So just giving his king an escape square and then that allows rook number two into the game. So perhaps coming here, perhaps switching to one of these files to, to support the rook here. I'm sure that black has enough activity to compensate for the pawn minus. Instead, rook e5. I mean, this still looks fantastic. Compensation for, well, he, he's not even a pawn down at the moment. Uh, but this, this one looks loose. So, it still looks like it, it's good enough for black. But that rook is perhaps not where it wants to be. Knight c5. So, Onishuk is just looking to exchange. And, you know, it does look pretty thin for white. Nakamura is a pawn up, but... How is this one going to advance down the board? Let's take a look. Here, Onishuk played rook e8, and I think it would have been better to just play g6 here, and then give yourself the option to maybe come here, maybe here. I mean, maybe another file, but I think g6 is going to be a necessary move for black. Instead, he played rook e8. Nakamura creates an escape square. g6, finally. But now things are starting to turn. The knight comes in and, well, this is crucial. This pawn is under fire, but knight c6. This knight returns from the rim. Knight's on the rim are dim, but it comes to a much better square where it, it starts to have influence over the board. And of course, it protects the b pawn too. And things definitely looking up for Nakamura now. Rookie two, trying to get counterplay, but, well, let's have a look. First of all, it looks tempting to play this move, forking the rooks, but actually black saves himself with rook takes b4, a nice little trick, followed by a check, and then you recapture, so that would be a mistake. Instead, Nakamura found rook d7, very good move. Now Onishuk took on f2. The only chance here was to play rook b6, but still, you know, white is in the driving seat. But the game finished rapidly here. Knight takes f2, and this is now a winning move. White simply wins material. There are a couple of checks, but Nakamura finds the right square with the king, 
and now it's utterly lost. There's no decent discovered check, the rook is dropping and black loses material. Onishuk played knight d1 check, but after that he was a rook down and so he resigned. So Nakamura wins the US Championship 2015. Uh, he needed to win that game because Ray Robson also won. So the final standings were Hikaru Nakamura on 8 out of 11, Ray Robson on 7.5. He's a real prospect for the future, just 20 years old, making great strides. And incredibly, in third position, Wesley So, who won his last round game, in fact, he won his last two games to pull himself up. So he finished on six and a half out of 11, an extraordinary result considering that he lost one game by forfeit and he lost three other games. He lost four games in total, but he still won six and drew one game. Mad result for him. Um, I mean, this championship in some ways has been overshadowed by, well, the, his forfeit, but also clearly his troubles off the board. Um, I really hope that he manages to, to settle. He is going off to the Elite Tournament in Shamkir, which starts on Friday. Um, look out for that. I'll be reporting hopefully every day on that. Magnus Carlsen's playing. Fabiano Caruana, Anish Giri, Vichy Anand, Vladimir Kramnik, MVL, Wesley So as well. And, well, it's going to be a tremendous tournament. But... Back to the US Championship. I think it's been a fantastic event. Uh, so many strong players um, and so many up and coming players. I should also uh, mention Samuel Sevian, who finished on 50%. He's only 14 years old, an incredible talent. But there we are. Nakamura wins again. Um, sensational uh, tournament. And um, well, as I said, do look out for my Shamkir reports. It starts this Friday. Thanks for watching.